Welcome to Brilliantly British. My name is Lawrence and today I'm going to show you how to make a hearty steak and kidney pudding. So as I show you how, please sit back, relax with a cup of tea in hand, putting those feet of yours up to and enjoy this episode. And don't forget to subscribe. So far on the channel, rice, summer, bread and butter, classic and modern sticky toffee puddings have made their appearances on the channel, showcasing the UK's creativity with and desire for all things sugar laden. In this episode, which will be the first of many to come, we'll be sharing our recipe for a rich and savory steamed pudding like no other. This, my dear viewers, is an English steak and kidney pudding made the traditional way with few and simple ingredients with a result that speaks for itself. Step by step, we'll be sharing our recipe with you, followed by an anticipated session of tasting at the end. And so now, with the introductions made and your interest peaking, please allow me to introduce the ingredients to you. For today's Brilliantly British Steak and Kidney Pudding, you will need an onion, some carrots, some chopped celery, some shredded suet, some kidney, you can go for lamb or beef. You will need some chuck, or as it's alternatively known, braising steak. You will need some parsley, some fresh thyme, some good quality beef stock, and some plain white flour, supplemented, of course, with a little pinch or two of salt and pepper to avoid the occurrence of bland food. That's it for the making of today's Brilliantly British Steak and Kidney Pudding. But, 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 before you get started, before you do anything at all, please, please, please switch on your kettle, brew yourself a nice cup of hot tea so that you can sip on that whilst you cook. To begin preparing your steak and kidney pudding, first liberally grease your pudding bowl with butter or lard followed by some spoons full of flour to thoroughly coat the bowl. Then, after having placed it to one side, proceed by mixing diced onion, celery, and carrots in a bowl before turning your attention thereafter to your beef. For the pudding, your steak will need to be diced roughly into two centimeter sized cubes, which should make for light work continuing by adding your diced beef to your bowl of onion, celery, and carrots. Following on to prepare your kidneys, simply slice through on one side, remove the inner sections of fat, and repeat until all have been butterflied before dividing into one centimeter sized pieces and adding to your bowl of meat and vegetables. To begin seasoning the pudding contents, finely chop and turn in parsley, freshly ground or in my case chopped black pepper with the addition of some tablespoons of flour thoroughly mixing and coating the ingredients not too long after before momentarily setting to one side. For the distinctly British suet pastry in a bowl by hand or in my case with the aid of a food processor I'll combine flour, suet fat and salt not before of course a sip of tea until homogeneous and sand-like in appearance. Having transferred the dry combined ingredients into a bowl with the end of a wooden spoon, I incrementally incorporated cold water until the dough became cohesive and somewhat sticky in texture. At which point, turn out your dough on a well floured surface, coating it liberally on all fronts with flour. Once coated, barrel roll, Cut away and store a third, then after ensuring that the surface remains well dusted with flour, roll out the larger remaining dough before tucking into your greased and floured pudding bowl. This step may appear fiddly, however if it does tear, feel free to patch the dough up later as suet pastry tends to be quite forgiving. With the suet pastry well and truly tucked in, with your work surface still dusted with flour, roll out the remaining third to form the lid, setting it aside for just a moment while salting your filling, 
ensuring that the salt has been well distributed before filling your suet pastry lined pudding bowl. Once filled, begin by delicately trickling in your beef stock, stopping one to two centimeters before the top, sealing all the contents in with the other rolled out piece of suet pastry, taking your time, ensuring that the contents have been well and truly sealed. Once sealed, having set the contents to one side, grease a sheet of baking paper, which you'll want to crimp in order to allow the pudding to expand as it steams, and then atop the baking paper sheet, you'll also want to set a crimped sheet of aluminium foil, continuing by encouraging the sheet to take the form of the bowl before securing the sheets in place with string, ensuring that enough slack has been left within the sheets again to enable the pudding to expand as it steams. Once secure, and this is purely optional, in order to make it safer and easier to remove once cooked, sling together a string handle, which will be 100% worth the time investment, not to mention the fact that you'll learn how to properly prepare a pudding for steaming. To steam in a sufficiently deep pot, on a small plate, or in my case, a ring of foil, seat your pudding basin, crucially checking that the bowl is level and in place before pouring in enough freshly boiled water to reach the midriff of the pudding bowl. Proceeding by placing on a lid, creating a closed environment for the pudding to steam within, over a medium heat in order to maintain a gentle rolling boil. The pudding will need to be steamed for four and a half hours with the water level being checked on and topped up when necessary, which you'll be pleased to know will leave you with ample time to plow through plenty of brilliantly British content, making sure to comment, like, and subscribe. Thank you. With the pudding ready, remove it from your pot and take it from me when I strongly advise leaving the pudding to rest for at least 20 minutes before overturning and removing the pudding form as I, on my first attempt, failed to do this. And well, the result unfortunately speaks for itself. Yeah. Nevertheless, on my second attempt, having exercised 20 to 30 minutes of patience, I overturned the pudding and removed the pudding form to unveil this modest looking steamed steak and kidney pudding with a characteristic wobble. Then, without getting carried away, cut into the pudding to reveal the rich and molten steak and kidney filling. So now, with the pudding made and your appetites peaking, I think it's time for... Tasting, tasting, tasting. Are you ready? Are you steady? My dear friends, my dear viewers, here we go. Three, two, one. Wow, the steak has become so tender. It's dissolving in my mouth and it's just releasing all of these wonderful beefy flavors. It's hearty, it's rich, it's decadent, and oh my God, it ticks all of the boxes. The kidney adds a lovely earthy flavor to the mix, and then you've got the hint of the thyme and the parsley coming through. You've got the pepper. Let, let me actually just get on to the fact that when you let this sit for a bit, it begins to set because when you first cut it, it's quite runny. It looks quite loose, at at the filling anyway. When you let it set, it just arrives at this perfect consistency and oh, it's amazing. It's amazing. I, I thought that it would end up being dry, but it's ended up being perfect. The way the suet pastry has encapsulated, contained, held in all of that moisture and has concentrated all of the flavors in there. With all that being said, I hope I've really sold this dish to you because you really ought to try it. It is one of the most distinct British dishes there is. So look, please, please, please make this dish, please. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you all for allowing me to show you how to make a hearty steak and kidney pudding. 
knowing that you loved this episode, don't forget to click on the like button, the subscribe button, and the notification button so that you don't miss any of our new releases. Tell everyone you know, and I mean everyone that you know, about the Brilliantly British Food on this channel and follow us on all of the social media platforms that this channel is on and I will see you 